Hi, in this presentation, I'm going to be introducing differential protection. The IEEE designation for differential protection is a device 87. This is called a differential relay. Differential protection is basically looking at the current entering a device, so I in, and looking at the current coming out of the device, I out. If the two currents are not equal, that means that there must be a fault in the protected component. Differential protection is used to protect transformers, generator windings, motor windings, transmission lines, buses, reactors, and capacitors. So a differential protection system consists of current transformers, so current transformers on both ends of the protected component, and of course, an 87 differential relay. Differential protection uses the principle of Kirchhoff's current law, that being the entering the protected zone must equal the current leaving the protected zone. The current transformers are the devices that define the boundary for the protected zone. Let's now have a look at the operation of a differential protection relay by looking at the simplest form of differential protection and that is in protecting uh, the windings of a generator. The first differential relays ever built were based off the principles of electromagnetics and electromagnetic circuits. I created a simple electromagnetic circuit just to help us to describe the theory of operation of the differential relay. A differential relay has three elements. It has uh, what's called a difference element, and it has two restraining elements. I'll call these R1 and R2. Currents I in and currents I out should be equal under normal operating conditions. So these are the primary currents seen by the uh, current transformers. The secondary currents, I'm going to call the secondary current from this current transformer I1, and I will call this current from this uh, second secondary of this current transformer, I will call I2. Currents I1 and I2 flow out of the CT secondaries and into the differential relay. Over on the right hand side, I've drawn the three elements of the differential relay. All three elements experience a current, but the differential element will experience the current difference between I1 and I2. So these are the currents that are flowing through the two restraining elements, R1 and R2. If the difference current is equal to zero, the relay will not operate. So let's make our electromagnetic circuit a little bit bigger and let's redraw the three relay elements. So we have the differential or operating element, and we have the two restraining elements. The elements are tied together at a common point. So here's my differential or operating element, here's my restraining element one, and my restraining element two. So, how does this relate to our electromagnetic circuit? Let's have a look and see how this relay operates. One thing I need to complete is I need to complete the connection from the common point between R1 and R2, and differential element. So the three points I'm drawing above here, these represent the open-ended terminals for the electromagnetic circuit below. So looking back at the electromagnetic circuit, I have two contacts. I have a stationary contact at the top and a movable contact, which I like to call as part of this uh, balance beam. So in the electromagnetic circuit, this iron bar here is part of a, a pivot system. So looking back over at our elements, the two restraining currents, I1 and I2, these two currents act to keep the contacts open. The resulting differential current, the current acts to keep the contacts closed. How does this relate to the magnetic circuit? If I look at the restraining elements, R1 and R2, current is flowing through the restraining elements, so a magnetomotive force is created. I'll call this magnetomotive force R for restraining elements. If there's current flowing through the difference element, a magnetomotive force is created. I'll call this MMF differential. So, if the magnetomotive force from the differential element is greater than the magnetomotive force from the restraining elements, the beam will be pulled down and the contacts will close. This will trip a circuit breaker. If, on the other hand, the magnetomotive force 
from the restraining elements is greater than the magnet the motor force from the differential element, the contacts will be held open, so the relay will not operate. So in summary, the restraining currents I1 and I2 act to keep the contacts open. The differential current acts to close the contacts. If the difference force is greater than the restraining force, the contacts will close. When the contacts close, a circuit breaker will operate to take the faulty equipment out of service. So that wraps up this video which provided a brief introduction to differential protection and the differential relay.